Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. And yes, I'm Cardwell. <laughs> and I'm Kevin. And today, oh, uh, we are... I Okay, so, one, let's congratulate uh, Wasi for... At the date of this recording, good old two cards were banned, Fires of Invention, which was meh, but also Agent of Treachery. You won't be missed. At all. Thank God. Get out of here. But... So with that, uh, we are playing a, a new Abzan deck called Force Transformation. I started out with like a graveyard thing, but I didn't know and mutate together and it just didn't work out. So I just went ahead and straight it mutate. But before we jump in the deck, I'm going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us and we love you very much for it and the link will be down below. And today, let's, let's just jump into it for sure. Uh, the first one is Gilded Goose because it's a one drop that you can mutate on it. It's a 0-2 flying bird, uh, enters the battlefield, put a food token in, and with that food token you can tap, <clears throat> pay two, tap, gain three life. With Gilded Goose, you can tap, sacrifice a food to add one mana of any color. It's the closest thing we have to a Birds of Paradise. That or pay two, tap, make a food token. So you can kind of have mana in the future too. Next up is the Bronze Hide Lion. It is a white and a green for a 3-3 cat. Uh, you can pay a green and a white, he gains indestructible. And then when he dies, return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with enchant creature you control. Gets the pay green and a white, gains a destructible until the turn. And yeah. it loses all other abilities. Which is fine, because <clears throat> it's amazing how quickly you can just make one of your impossible mutate dudes, like, unstoppable. Uh, this one from a long time ago, Amara, Soul of the Accord. It's a green and a white 2-2. Uh, when it becomes tapped, create a 1-1 white soldier creature target on lifelink. And if you notice, the soldier token doesn't have human attached to it, so you can also mutate onto that too if she dies. That's pretty good. Yeah. Next up is Crystalline Giant. He is three for a 3-3 three, three colorless artifact creature. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter that, at random, that Crystalline Giant doesn't have a from among flying, first strike, death, touch, hexproof, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, vigilance, and plus one plus one. Yes. Put a counter of that kind on Crystalline Giant. So every turn, you just get extra stuff yeah like doesn't matter what you're getting you're gonna get something cool you may get first strike death touch in the first two times but the more turns you go with this guy on combat the better he gets oh yeah and hopefully your number one hope luck that you get is hexproof therefore they can't kill it and then you mutate on it and it can win the game by itself and this is the star of the deck to be honest and it also says that it doesn't have so if you're the mutate dudes already give it flying already give it hexproof already give it whatever then you get extra you get just, the other counters. It's just crazy and fun with that. And the first mutate, of course, is Cub, Cub Warden. It's three and a white. Mutate has two and two white, which is a little rough, but it has lifelink, three, five. And whenever this creature mutates, create two one one white creature tokens with lifelink. So just more things to just mutate on. Uh, next up is the Dirge Bat. It is a two black and two for a three three flying flash. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planes are an opponent controls, and its mutate cost is six. Yeah. But to be able to flash this in and then do a mutate onto it is also really good. And the fact that you get to target what dies, and especially a planeswalker, just mutate on it, instant speed, kill a planeswalker, and thanks. Next up is Migratory Greyhorn. It's three and a green, three, four. It has a mutate for three. So two and a, one green. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land card, put it in the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. I think he's one of the strongest mutate creatures out there ever. He just mana ramps you. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what you put it on, it just you, you get the ability to be like, hey, search for lands. Pretty yeah. cool. Especially if you just turn one goose, turn two of this, and you already have your third or fourth land immediately. So it helps out for sure. Yeah. Next up is Nethroy, Apex of Death. He is a 5-5. Uh, five, five. He is two, a white, a black, and a green for... The cat nightmare beast. Yes. Because I mean, you gotta put all those together, why not? Exactly. Don't. But he's got a mutate of six, or seven. Uh, it's a green white hybrid, two black and four. So it costs a lot to mutate him, but if you get his mutate, then you get to go crazy. Yeah. And really, you don't have to worry about him mutating, you just put other dudes on him. Pretty much. Anyways, he's got death touch lifelink, and when this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So at very minimum, this dude's gonna get at least like three to four dudes because gilded goose is zero so it still counts as one it just comes with nothing yeah exactly so you get a free gilded goose and free food counters and then all the little dudes it's pretty fun and 
But be sure, I will, I will make another deck with this guy. Like, this is the guy that made I started the deck with and then had a split <clears throat> thing. I'm like, there's too many cards in Magic right now. So you need to, like, specify exactly what you're doing. So there will be another Graveyard Shenanigans deck with this guy. And this one's just, like, a pure fun mutate deck for sure. And Abzan's a really strong color. I been, was looking at all the multicolored creatures. I was like, wow, there's a lot of power in here to do and transfer and all that fun mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, a returning champion of mine, favorite, is the Ozolith. It's a one-drop legendary artifact. And when a creature you control leaves the battlefield, it, it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. At the beginning of the combat of the turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, then you may move all counters from the Ozolith onto target creature. And the, only, there's only one, but that's only because of Crystallite and Giant. So if it gets board wiped and it dies, then you put this on another creature, all those counters on another creature, or play another Giant to keep putting the counters on it so it can get more instantly and that's what i wanted to do be like oh i have a hex proof with five other things on it oh dies a mutate creature comes in put this on it and then done good luck dealing with it again yeah because the ozolith doesn't care what kind of counter it is first strike plus yeah. one plus one counters we don't care yeah they just all move all move and then it all gets back placed on and that's the super cute thing about it Next up is Dawn of Hope. It is a white and one for an enchantment. When you gain life, you may pay two if you do draw a card, and you can pay four to create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature with lifelink. Again, it is not human, so you can mutate onto those soldiers. Correct. And I noticed all the incidental, while I was testing it, all the incidental life gain that we have. And sad thing about Abzan, there's not much draw, unless you sacrifice some things for it. But this makes it where you just gain life, you draw cards, and you'll be getting a lot of land for sure. Guarantee you that. And the next one is Find and Finality, an old classic. Find is a, a hybrid of Golgari, two of them. And then Renu, Renu, return up to two target creatures from your graveyard to your hand. But the best part is Finality, which is four black and a green. You may put two 1-1 counters on the target creature you control, then all other creatures get minus four, minus four. And before the bans, it was like pretty much, it was all just small dudes. So this will board wipe your opponent for sure. And you get to keep two creatures for yeah. at least. Finality is, is super it's, strong. It's still good. Next up is Mortify, a black, white, and one for instant destroy target creature or enchantment because you need the kill spells, you need the creature control, and this kills pretty much everything. Yeah, it's just the best. Also that kills everything is Mythos of Netherai. It's a black and two, instant, destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature. Or if it, green and white was spent to cast a spell. So basically you kill a creature, Instant speed for three or anything else if Abzan was spent for it, which is pretty good. Like it has helped out a lot and you get those lands pretty much instantly. Almost turn three. Uh, next up is our boy Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord. He is two and a white and a black for a four loyalty walker. As long as it's your turn, creatures and planes you control have lifelink. So that helps your crystal and giant because you already would have lifelink. Uh, plus two. He deals one damage to target player or planeswalker and you would gain life. And minus X, return target creature with Karuma and cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains Vampire in addition to its other types. So this dude is still super strong yeah, because he, he just really brings is. back dudes. It helps you bring back the dudes that they just killed off and you're like, cool, bring this dude back, mutate onto that new dude. Yeah. Great. And if prices matter at the moment, he's still less than a dollar. And I think he's super powerful. Like I, the fact that the life difference of gaining life at a big rate like that if you have tons of dudes and you swing in it matters and it really does matter when you can bring back any other creature for almost for free and then mutate on it immediately to do yeah. that too and of course uh with that that will be the deck we have the lands of course we have force we have all the basics force playing swamps and then we have just the shock lands so we have gullus shrines and the triome as well so it, it it counts as a Plains, a uh, Forest, and Swamp, and then you can pay three to cycle. And then we have Overgrown Tomb, and then Temple Garden as well. It's just simple as that. I'm still testing out what, what works and what's good for a faster pace, for sure. And uh, we also don't have sideboards, but we do have honorable mentions, just in case, like... Because um, most things are nowadays, because it's on Arena, that you only have best of ones. But if you do play it traditionally, then these cards can be either placed in the main deck or sideboard just in case and the first one is knight of autumn because it's one of the, still super powerful one green and white two one enters the battlefield choose one put two counters on them uh destroy target artifact or enchantment which matters or you gain four life 
which is for the aggro matchup. Next up would be Konoros, the Hound of Athreos. It is a white, black, and one for a 3-3 Hound with Vigilance, Menace, and Lifelink. Creature cards and graveyards can't enter the battlefield, and players can't cast spells from graveyards. Yeah. So he does kind of hurt you from being able to bring dudes back, but that's okay. Yeah. And then uh, Jim Razor, because he's also super good. He's a 3 green, 4-4 four, four beast. And he has Mutate for 3, 1 and 2 green. Reach, Trample. And when it mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment upon it controls. So that just helps out for sure. Yeah, that's that disenchant on a creature. Yeah, which is pretty good. Ridiculous. Uh, next up is Tristani Discordant. It is three, a white and a green for a 1 4 dryad. Other creatures get plus one, plus one. And when he enters the battlefield, create two 1 1 white soldier tokens with lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. So, you know, this is the hipster in me for sure. But uh, this is, I made this sideboard before Agent Treachery was banned. Yeah, and she's a good creature reason why for it, but it's banned, so you probably don't need a player. But you know, just to let you know, yeah, I did it first, and of course, Shadow Spear because it's super good. It's a one drop artifact. This can probably go on every deck, to be honest. Equip creature gets plus one plus one, has trample and lifelink. Pay one, permanent opponent controls, loses hexproof and indestructible until the turn, and equip cost is two. So this can get rid of Thassa for sure. So you can make Thassa undestructible and kill it, because that's really horrible right now. And mm -hmm. plus any of the... I've been seeing a lot of aura mutate decks with the elf that has hexproof, that two drop mana dork. So you just give it non-hexproof and kill it. So that, that, is the, that is the deck and sideboard. Uh, the list will be down below. And hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island. Goodbye. Later. Also guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you very you much. much. We love you.